our main concern is the city's citizens committees for the 2022-27 upcoming bond election have voted to eliminate public art funding from drainage and flooding projects as well as lowering the public art funding for parks and recreation projects that were uh, hopefully we're going to be at 1.5 and I think they're recommending 1%. Um, <clears throat> so what I would like to do is introduce our first presenter, uh, George Cisneros, and he will be speaking about public art and community. George? Mm -hmm. oh, thank you very much. It takes a lot of uh, energy for working artists to get out of the house on Wednesday evening. This is typically working hours for you uh, till three in the morning. So thank you very much for coming out tonight. Uh, I also want to thank the former mayor, Mayor Harper, for being here because he has been instrumental in so many of the public art, public performances of, of San Antonio that has made us illuminaries. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I want to just pop real backwards a bit and just say that when we were kids and we would visit relatives in Mexico or even in rural Colorado or New Mexico, every town had little plazas, little, little places where there was a piece of art or a fountain or, or something. But every neighborhood had something where people would go to congregate. These were public spaces, these were common areas. And the tradition of a public artwork is it's been here for, that, for hundreds of years. Uh, it's just that in modern times, the neighborhoods don't have their own little plazas and their own little parks anymore. And uh, as the suburbs spread out and the city expanded, a lot of the public spaces that we had are, are gone. Uh, and so we've had to come up with the concept of parks and recs to come and revive that idea. But for me, public art is a place where people plant flags and say, this is my neighborhood. You know, this is where we congregate. This is where we come when there's, a, uh, you know, on Sunday afternoons and the, and the fathers teach the daughters how to dance and the kids learn how to run or skate and ride their bikes. But there's always something in the middle of that plaza or the park and it's usually an artwork. So for me, public art is about congregations. It's about uh, where people congregate. And when people congregate, there's less crime. So when you think about it, public art is really about public safety. And you re the neighborhood is reclaiming the turf. And it, in, in some countries, that's the way it works. And this is where the news takes place. This is the cheese circle, where, you know, where if somebody's doing something wrong, everybody in the neighborhood knows because they, when they're sitting around the plaza on Sunday afternoon, it's common talk. So you keep your neighborhood safe by having a public space and uh, uh, I was not ever I never received one any of the city's public art projects because I was the last artist to receive the city's design enhancement of projects which was the last project before the 1995 ordinance kicked in and uh, uh, so I'm very proud of it been a part of that first cycle and God willing, oh, maybe maybe I'll get back into the second, which is the PASA program. Uh, but I want to encourage you that think of what we're doing is an extension of public safety, of public wellness. People go to parks where there's art and they walk. And there's nothing more healthy than walking. I, I think I've walked almost every park. I've, Harburger Park, uh, I've walked it so many times. The river extensions, both directions, mostly to the south is what I love. Confluence Park, it's an amazing place. Brackenbridge, McAllister, you name it. Uh, you can get healthy if you go to the parks. And the parks are ideal, the streets are ideal for art. Mark. And I wanted to say thank you very much to everybody who's been doing this. Uh, the public art projects that we had early, early on were from the Housing Authority, 
the 141 projects over there that Tachi Torres and the, community, uh, and, and the guys did with community cultural arts over there in the very, very beginning. Uh, uh, that 141 group of, of murals is starting to fade. We have to start thinking out of a way to preserve them before the housing authority says, oh, they're faded, let's just paint over them. And we can't have that happen because that's happening in LA right now. The Chicano mural movement of the 60s and 70s is getting painted over because they're fading off the walls. So all of this is connected somehow or another. And Bill, amazing, you and the young lady, where is the wife? Uh, there she is. You guys have really done a lot of work, Luis. Uh, you know, you, you've done stuff, Kim. And of course, to, you know, thank you very much for putting this together. So anyway, art and public art and community, it's, it's really the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, good. Thank you, George. And uh, <clears throat> now I would like uh, Terry Ivanis to speak about uh, neighborhoods need public art. Public art is public good. De colores, de colores se visten los barrios en la primavera. You know, it's spring in my neighborhood all the time. Even though Brenda Pacheco, who's my vice president for Mission San Jose Neighborhood Association, and myself fight like the dickens to get what we want for better quality of life in my barrio. But we're fortunate enough to have some amazing public art pieces. Some of them are funded by the bonds. Some of it is funded by SARA. Some of it is funded by the county. But whomever the resource is, they're bringing a color to the quality of my life to an underserved community. Public art is definitely needed in my neighborhood. It's needed in District 5 neighborhoods where the underserved are predominantly low income and middle class. Where parks, as George Cisneros stated, have been taken over by whatever whim needs to be developed there. Where uh, District 4 is being taken over by highways and the military complex, and many, many strip malls. But what I don't see in a lot of the underserved neighborhoods, and like I said, our neighborhood is fortunate, because we're part of the rural heritage buffer zone. What I don't see in neighborhoods that aren't as lucky as ours is art. Art that reflects a culture of the people who live there, the history of the people who live in those barrios, the color that is immensely saturated in their homes, in their yards, the rascuache art that you see in all these underserved communities because there's no public art. But the rascuache art can inspire that public art. Public art is needed in neighborhoods to educate, to inspire that child artist, to reflect on, to have pride. Parks also have an essential element for our community. In our community, we fought to keep our Mission Marquee Plaza. And we have some public art pieces. Some of it is art design enhancements on the architecture of our library. But what I, what I see that it does is it brings, as George said, it brings our community together in a place, a place making. Art does that. 
It, it inspires, it educates, it moves us to be better and to protect our neighborhoods. So I really hope that our council people will listen, that our mayor will listen, that our city manager will listen, that they cannot take this 1% or 1.5%. In fact, they need to increase it because it does so much for keeping a community healthy and inspired. So, de colores, de colores se viste en mi barrio en la primavera. so much, Terry. I will not destroy this by trying to sing. <laughs> uh, next up is Kim Bishop, uh, and she will be doing a call to action. After she speaks, I am going to ask um, Honorable Phil Hardberger to come up to say a couple of words, and then it goes to you guys. And any kind of comments or questions or anything, uh, I encourage you to uh, do that and we will give you a microphone so everybody can hear. So Kim. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Kim Bishop. I am an artist here in town. Um, and I've just recently, um, with my partner Luis Valdez, We've gotten a major project through the drainage bond on ceiling channel. We've been working on it for three years and it's gonna break ground next month, okay? So you can imagine how surprised I was when I saw uh, the report about the Citizens Committee proposing that we cut all public funding from the drainage proposal, bond proposal. Um, and especially since it was, you know, in, in my district, <laughs> you know, District 7. So, um, I watched the committee, and let me first say thank you so much to everybody who volunteers to be on the Citizens Committees. It's really important, and I appreciate that they're doing their, their civic duty. Um, however, <laughs> I was a surprised to see how it was discussed at all, considering that this is a city ordinance, considering that having public art, 1% of public art for drainage, has, was voted on by the citizens of San Antonio, and therefore, I feel like the administration should keep that promise and keeping 1% in. Now, let me tell you some reasons why. I totally agree with what these two wonderful people have been talking about, about the voice, the identity, the safety, the health, absolutely, all of that. But let me tell you about our project. We started in 2019, we got awarded this project. And with the money, the funds that we have for this project, from the 1%, which, 1%, um, from the 1%, we have funded seven artists, we funded seven poets, we funded two fabricators, one local construction company, we funded two engineering companies and an architecture firm, and a local company that does soil testing, and a nursery. <laughs> you know, we have gotten to spread this money out during a pandemic when everything else was shutting down, and especially for artists, when it was shutting down for artists, because this was funded by a bond and not by a HOTS tax, we could keep going and we could spread it out. So it's an economic generator in the production of it. And now, once it's gonna get finished, this is gonna be a place where people are gonna wanna come. People are gonna wanna come. Scenic Channel is all concrete, y'all. It is all concrete. But 
the public art piece that we're putting with it is creating a space where people can come and relax. They can come read poetry, see the artwork. It's a museum for everyone because it's in the public, okay? And it's a place where people can have um, gatherings for community. This is a place for everyone. And they're gonna come, and then while they're there, after they visit it, they're gonna go have lunch in our district. You know, they're gonna go fill up their cars in our district. So it's gonna be an economic generator, not just in the production of it, but for decades. This is a place where people are going to journey and pilgrimage. And because it's seven artists out of just our community, y'all, we have so many artists in this city. We have so many poets in this city. And all of us. It needs to stay local. It needs to stay community art. And I have to say, I really appreciate that Public Art San Antonio who Louise and I didn't have a whole lot. We have a little bit of experience, but not a whole lot of experience. They have mentored us. They have mentored us through this huge thing. And I appreciate their patience so much. So I'm here to encourage you guys. We've already sent out over 100 letters to city council. And I'm here to encourage you, please write letters. Please write letters to them because then it can go into the archive. Okay, there's a place where you could do public commentary online. Okay, and then on January 12th, they're going to be listening to community members. And I would, I dream of us all coming out and us all standing up for public art and speaking for public art so that it goes down into the city archive that all of these people stood up for public art and for artists in this community and our community, and the better health of our community in general. So, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thank you, Bill, for doing all this work. This is a budget that only comes up every five years. Yes. This is, this is for the next five years. Well, and it's for five years, but what is produced in this five years is for a century. Right. You know? So it's not like, oh, we're going to fill a pothole with our 1%. You know? And, and this brings or up, we're not sorry. Gonna get this money every year. Yeah, or exactly. That's my point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I heard in listening, I would encourage you guys to listen to some of these citizen committee meetings. Um, <laughs> they're, they're interesting. And um, I heard some misnomers about what public art is. You know, I heard someone say, well, 1% is not enough to make a difference with drainage. But we could, if we cut it, we could make a point. Uh, you know, we're not here to be your point. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was unnerving, and because it was unnerving, I feel it's really important that we all stand up and say, no, that's not what this is about, and that's not who we are, and that's not why our purpose of being here. So, thank you. Thank you, Kim. And again, I uh, want to remind you about our handouts, which include the... Uh, list of uh, city council people and, and their staff. So, Phil, can I ask you to come up and uh, say a couple of words? Thank you. By the way, I was just tested, so uh, coming over here. So I'll take this off for, the, for saying what I have to say, which I think is very important. First, I want to say clear and unambiguously I am for the 1.5 percent in every bond project period <laughs> any step to go backwards on that and there have been other fights but we won those fights and that's how we got to the 1.5 percent any step backwards from that is going the wrong direction it is going a direction that is bad for San Antonio 
is sometimes said, well, we're a poor city. We, we don't really have the money for the public art. We have to spend it on the drainage or the streets or whatever the project. That is totally the wrong message. The poorer you are, the poorer the city is, the more you need public art. <laughs> because public art brings beauty into our lives, and most of us in one way or another love beauty. It's an attraction of a city, but it's more than that. It's a personal attraction. We see beautiful spouses. We see beautiful houses. We see beautiful children. We seek beauty because our soul demands it. And in a city where sometimes we do have a lot of needs, and I do not dispute those needs, and the needs need to be met. But art, public art, is one of the needs. Uh, on the drainage, am I for drainage? Of course I'm for drainage. I am for spending 98.5% of the money that goes to drainage to the actual drainage project in question. But I want that 1.5% where it is because it fulfills a real need of the city of San Antonio. You know, and all of you touched it. George, of course, has been through the battles before, as I have, by the way. When I was mayor, we had these same battles. This is not new. Uh, Terry, when you were talking about the neighborhoods, does public art benefit the neighborhoods? Well, of course it does. If it's a good neighborhood, it'll be a better neighborhood with, with public art. If it's not so good a neighborhood, it'll be a better not so good neighborhood with public art. So the neighborhoods clearly gain. When the neighborhoods gain, where does that lead us? Well, so many neighborhoods make the city of San Antonio. That's where we live. That's what we want to be a success. That's where we want to enjoy ourselves when we step out the front door every day. So the city itself becomes better. When the city becomes better, now we are into, as Kim pointed out, the economics of the whole thing. I'm not saying public art is all about economics, but it certainly is a part of it. And I'll share this with you from having been mayor two terms. When you're trying to get people to come to San Antonio, either as individuals or companies, corporations, or associations, it doesn't really matter. They want to come to a beautiful spot. They don't want to come to an ugly spot. And a CEO, no matter how many millions he may have. I can tell you what I know his wife and children want. And they want a good city. She wants to go someplace that she loves to be there, that has a wow factor. And nothing gets there any quicker than public art. We have some outstanding public art. If you, uh, as was mentioned, if you go up and down the river, whether it's the Museum Reach or the uh, Mission Reach, that's all public art in that river. You have the fundamental construction of the river extension, but you have public art from one end to the other, 13 miles of public art. Well, it didn't come free, but it made people love the work. And when you pour concrete, you need all the help you can get to make it beautiful. But public art can pull that off. Uh, uh, just a, a stark, unadorned drainage is ugly. Maybe needed, might stop flooding, but it's ugly. And you do not need to make the choice. You can have both. And that's what I'm saying, you should have both. So I would encourage you, everyone, to make this your fight. It is a fight we've already won, at least twice that I know of. So let's make it a third time. And you know, Kim, you were mentioning that sometimes it seems like the people on those committees have some peculiar thinking. I would say this, they have uneducated thinking. They haven't thought through this. If you think through it, public art is a win, win, win. And every great city, every great city has a lot of public art. 
Austin pours money into Austin. And that goes all the way, if you want to go from there to Paris or to Rome, full of public art. Every great city has public art and a lot of it. So we're here on the good cause and we're here on the winning cause. But we really have to put our shoulders to the wheel. Let, you, uh, let your council people know how you feel about this. And you can do that on the telephone, email, or form letters. Doesn't matter. Or all three. And I will take it on myself to talk to the mayor and the city manager if they're interested in my opinion that this is too important to take a pass on, much less regress on. So thank you for being here, and I am very happy to be shoulder to shoulder with every one of you in this fight. I have found that a good fight is very invigorating when you win it, and we will. We will. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Unfortunately, when he was mayor, uh, we had a restrictive only two two-year terms to be mayor. It is now four two-year terms. So if you would like to run again, Phil, I will be the first <laughs> to give you a fundraiser. <laughs> I, will open, uh, I will open up uh, for any comments or questions from the audience. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs>